right guys, how you doing? And welcome to the Hashtag Academy Second Series. We're calling it Hashtag Academy Second Chance. Okay, this could be one of many players' second chance in football. They could have been coming out of an academy, they could have had an injury, they could have played a little bit already in their career and want to kind of re reinvent it a little bit of Hashtag United. So this is what we're doing right now. If you remember the first series, of course, it was a huge success. A couple of years ago now we did it. The winner was Scott Pollock. Uh, he went on to play in League Two now with Northampton Town, signing professionally with them recently. He's in FIFA. He's been unbelievable. We would love it if we can find another player like Scotty P. So Series 2 starts today. In this episode, you're going to see all the action from two trial days. Today and tomorrow, we're going to have over 100 players come down. We're looking to take roughly 30 players through to Episode 2. So the competition is going to be high. We're expecting good talent. I mean, we've had some unbelievable applications. If everyone's been telling the truth in their applications, we're going to have some very, very good footballers. Of course, Hashtag United manager Jay Devereaux is here. That's one of the big changes to Hashtag United since last series. We're a proper non-league football team. Now we're playing in a, a league with just one, our first ever season, winning the title at step six of non-league, going up to step five. So that's the ninth division of England, if you like. So anyone that comes out of this series to play for Hashtag is going to have to be really high quality. Okay? We signed a lot of players from Series 1. Lots of players have gone on to play for Hashtag that didn't necessarily win the series, but were part of the academy process. We're looking to do the same again here. We could take more than one player, of course, but there will just be one winner. Now that winner is going to get a contract with Hashtag United worth up to £5,000. So they're going to be paid to play football every single week. They're also going to get a special sponsorship deal with our partners for this series, Adidas Glitch. Okay, this is a really good package. They're going to get boots, they're going to get great opportunities if they win the Academy Series. So along with me and Devs, we've got lots of other people helping us judge talent. Players from the team, some senior players of course. We've also got some special guests. All right, we've got the likes of Football Manager, obviously one of our partners. They've sent down a scout, who's the same people that are you know, going out and scouting stats for the game. They know exactly what to look for in potential talent. And we've also got Career Mode Stars, who's someone that's really good at identifying uh, players on FIFA in Career Mode. He wants to have a chance to identify them in real life, so we've invited him down to do just that. Also, one of the benefits of having Glitch involved in this series is you guys can actually vote at different points throughout the series on who goes through using the Glitch app. Okay, so if you're going to be part of this series, taking part, helping us find our winner, I'd recommend you get the Glitch app. There's a link in the description or you can just search Adidas Glitch. And there's lots of other content on their app as well. So definitely recommend you going out and downloading that. Of course, you are going to play a huge part in this series. You guys at home are going to be pivotal. You helped us find Scott Pollock. You're going to help us find the next winner. You're going to have actually more chances to vote on players than you've had ever before in a Hashtag Academy series. Ultimately though, the winner will be decided by the manager at Devs. There's a good reason for this, okay? That's because obviously there's no point in giving him a winner that he doesn't want to use, he doesn't think he can use in the team. It needs to be someone that he wants and is excited to see play for Hashtag United. But you guys are going to help us get those players to the final. It's ultimately going to end with two players, just like last series, and Devs will choose who wins. So we've got lots of cool challenges coming up over the next few episodes, some 11 aside games, a lot of the stuff you loved from the first series is going to come back format wise, but today and tomorrow in this episode it's all about the trials. Can players stand out? Can they make us remember the name? Let's find out. Okay boys, welcome to the Hashtag Academy. Well done for making it this far, thank you for applying and taking the time out today. Hopefully you've been very truthful in your applications about your footballing ability. If you haven't, we're going to find out pretty quickly. We've done this once before. We were really happy with what we found. And if you know the story of this lad, but he now plays for Northampton in League Two. He was just like one of you uh, a couple of years ago. Obviously you're in your teams already. You're going to go to some pitches now, play some small-sided games. We're going to watch you, see what we can find, and then we're going to slowly increase the, the size of the teams until we end up with some 11 aside later in the day. Enjoy yourself. Have a good one. Let's see what you got, boys, all right? Let's go. Logistical nightmare. Luckily, I'm a logistics king. Uh, but in another life, I could have been running Terminal 3 at Heathrow. And we're underway. Sorry to interrupt you guys, what have we seen so far? Um, me and Scotty P are doing all kinds of scouting here. Um, later on in the day, Scott's going to tell us a name to remember. But right now it's a bit early for that. 
We like the look of potentially Jake Lindsay, 63. He's got a bit about him. Now, are you looking at people that can go past you or people who can do a job as good as you? <laughs> you always want someone to go past you. Um, but if they get as good as me, then uh, they've done well. What are you looking for today? I mean, there there is no set definition of what we're trying to find. It's the yeah, open mind. What see what comes along. We're looking for talent. You know, I would say a centre back, but the good thing about hashtag, we're looking for strikers, midfielders, defenders, goalkeeper. No matter what it is, we're looking for you. And today, you know what? There's a lot of ballers, so it's one of them ones where you just got to stay tuned to see what happens next. Shall I be honest with you? Because I play in central midfield, I like tidy players. Like, they're obviously not as good as, but the likes of Iniesta, Xavi, they're tidy, they're technical, they don't always force pass it, they try and keep it local and they just do the right things at the right time. So I'm looking, mainly for me, is a tidy player who's technically gifted. Someone who can take your position? No, because I'm on the bench. Number 72 and number 84. Did they work harder than Ryan Adams? They work just as hard. Really? Yes. Wow, these are big statements. You better back this up. So far, so good. Hi, I'm Ricardo. I came all the way from Scotland just to be here. We post information on top players uh, at young ages on Twitter. So. Okay, that's very, very interesting. So what are you looking for today in a player? How do you scout? I'm looking for a player that's nice and composed on the ball. A player that can keep the ball on the floor and do all the hard work without necessarily showing off too much. Have you seen so far anybody who works harder than you? Harder than me, no, but there's a few shouts for the purple team. Working hard, putting a shift in, looking good. Any numbers? I'm impressed. Um, yeah, would you say Rick? 50, wasn't it? 50 looks good, looks solid. Um, I'd say 62 at the work, 62 at the back looks decent. Good stuff, um, good stuff. Well. I like good. it, I like it. And Rick, have you seen anybody that has put in a bigger challenge than you? I'm not calling out anyone early doors, I don't want to. I don't want to be wrong early. It's only one game. Scared? Scared for your position? Yeah, scared. Very scared. I wish there's 54 centre mids. Well, you should be very scared because... It's all right. So do we, mate. <laughs> We've actually had a call from uh, the person whose balls you keep kicking in their garden. They've oh, made yeah. a formal complaint. So <laughs> Release me. Right, I'm here with Lewis Brogan, Kane Brogan from the first team. Hashtag United, brotherly rivalry going on. I can't lie to you, I think you're better than him already. Well, what can I say, I've got a better pace than him, bit, better technical work, but I've got a better airline than him as well. Oh, big, big, big statements. What have you got to show for us today? Well, I was showing that my, my pace is key. Got a bit of strength about me and good technical work. Right, I'm here with another hashtag relative. I'm here with Connor Barker, Ryan Barker's younger brother. What brings you here today, mate? Uh, just like watch my brother throughout the season, coming into a few games, just like the way the club was run. Want to get back into playing a bit. You know, I watched the uh, first Academy series and thought, come down and give it a try. That's good stuff. And you work a lot within football as well, don't you? Tell me a little bit about that. While I'm at college, I've got a placement with Spurs, which is now turned it's going to be full time work doing coaching and I also do uh, bits with the first team, like around the kit, like help set up sessions and stuff like that. And I'm here with a familiar face. It is none other than Abdul, a.k.a. Zlatan. You're back. You're back for more. Tell me. Talk to me. Why are you here? That's it, man. Yeah, I'm back for season two. I was in season one. We got far, but we never made it. But this time, we're back to make that vision into reality. We need to, we need to win it. That's good stuff. You sound confident. I like it. Now, what's, what's changed? What, what did you not do last time that you're now going to bring to the table this time around? What I realised is to keep, to keep it simple, be a team player, lead from the back, lead by example, and... We'll make it all the way, yeah. We're all about hard work and we hashtag, so that's obviously my number one factor. Um, but simple stuff impresses me more than all the, the flashy showboating stuff. Has anybody taken 
a touch from 60 feet in the air just like you do in our game? Uh, not yet, mate. Not yet. I don't think we're going to say that today, will we? Well, is it, it's only you that's got that in your locker. Yeah, I think so. We've seen that over the season, haven't we? Hi, Devs. Uh, have you seen any decent centre-halves yet? Am, am I safe? Don't know, yeah. What are you looking for? When I'm looking at the players, I'm looking at what they're doing off the ball, I'm looking at their body language, I'm looking at their positional sense. On the ball, I'm looking at their decision-making, um, their execution, the, the whole package, really. So I might see something in the player in, in a couple of minutes when and he's not touched the ball and then I'll stay and I'll have to watch to see what it'll be like when the, when, the, when he gets on the ball it's like so um, I kind of said before really I'm, I'm fairly open minded about it all really enjoying seeing seeing the talent here and seeing the potential these guys have got to go on and win and then see what they do in their futures in terms of the trials, I just try to just be myself, just show what I usually would do and not try anything fancy like to begin with. So I'll try and just get it down, get a few passes going um, and then just, just be confident with your ability. After that, once you settle into it, you just play your natural way. Um, try to be a bit like vocal as well. And, um, yeah, and then when, when the chances came, sort of final passes or a shot, you just have to make that count. Moving to eight aside now, so bigger pitches, bigger goals come into play. Bit, bit of a different test for the goalkeepers. Uh, we've reworked the teams a little bit. So yeah, we get a little bit more space to see what people can do. It's a very different ball game now, you go bigger and then obviously later on we're going to go 11. So we've already got, an, I'd say probably based on my conversations with players, five or six players that are standing out right now. That's what my, what my scouts are telling me. So we'll see if they continue to stand out. assists so far? Uh, a few, a few hopefully, but yeah, I mean in these sorts of games these goals are different to, diff difficult to score, but yeah, just trying to get other people in good positions, get some goals. Uh, for me there was only two that massively stood out um, and that was 1-5-3, it was very very good, both footed, quick with the ball, good passing, work rate was ridiculous and the other lad was 1-7-4, um, it was a striker, left footed guy, um, very very strong. Um, hold up play was phenomenal, his finishing was phenomenal, um, but they've been the two main standouts for me. No, it's been good, it's been good. Uh, I've only played one game so far, 2-0, no goals yet, clean sheet, so I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, really good, really enjoying it, just doing what I can to try and prove myself. It's been really good though. If I was to describe myself as a player, it would be Hazard. So I'm a bit like John Terry, I think I'm quite composed on the ball. Um, I think I'm a leader, I think I communicate well and organise well. Yep. Iniesta, I feel like I play the same sort of game as him, on the ball, technical midfielder. I feel like I'm a, I'm a ball playing centre back, that's one of my, my strengths. Yeah, um, I started from playing centre mid, so moving the centre back means I got a lot more time to see the game. Uh, so I do enjoy picking out a nice pass or two. So I, um, I used to play for White Enzyme last season, I was with White Enzyme, who uh, obviously were rivals of us, uh, sorry, rivals of Hashtag at the season for the title race last season. Experience. Um, no, I'm a striker at the end of the day, so I'm composed in front of goal. That's always been my, uh, uh, my threat. My speed, obviously, as well. You know, I've got lightning speed, and yeah, just I mean, I, you know, when I've got the ball, I'm in, composed in front of goal. And yes, I'm here right now with Roche. He's hiding that little EXO badge underneath his bib. Cheeky, cheeky. But listen, we love the boys over at EXO. But tell me, why are you here today? 
Just a more professional surf, you know, I want to play more minutes, I want to play more regular football. We play the same kind of football, but it's just a more professional, more minutes over here. How's the trial gone for you today? Today's been so far so good. Uh, my team's doing well, we're pressing together, we're building chemistry and shape, so hopefully it goes better. Yeah, I think I played well, to be fair. I think I've shown that I'm a good leader. I play at the level anyway, so I think I showed my quality probably that I'm already equipped to play at this standard. I think it went well for me personally, yeah. One, six, nine I thought was very good, and one, eight, nine, absolutely rapid, quicker than Harry, honestly. Really? Really enjoying the process. It's, uh, it's, what's great is to see how many um, guys have applied. It's a good feeling to see how important it is to the players that are turning up to want to play for, for our football club. OK, we're going to be moving to 11 aside games now. Uh, we've had to cut a few players from the morning session, roughly about 10 players. Um, not nice to cut players, obviously, but we have to be a little bit ruthless if we're going to find the best possible talent. Obviously, it's a little bit of a different challenge, bigger goals, particularly for the keepers. See a bit more about them than we did in the smaller sided games. So I'm looking forward to seeing some boys shine on the big stage. For me, it's the 11 aside side element um, that I really focus on, and that's where I'm looking at players and things that might catch my eye, and that doesn't have to be what they do with the ball. It might be something that they do off the ball. A uh, ball might be the far side of the pitch, and, and, a, and a player uh, makes a movement or, or makes a decision that uh, affects things that I see and think you know there's, there's potential there and then you look into obviously to see what they do on the ball and how they affect the game so um, that's essentially what, I, what I'm looking for if they've got the quality uh, and then they're making the right decisions that, that's, that's brilliant. Ryan with Carlos, 17 years of age. Talk to me, how has the trial gone for you so far? Um, so far, I feel like the standard's been absolutely top quality. I mean, like, well, well done to the lads that have all showed up. Um, I, haven't seen, I haven't been to something like this in such a long time. I hear as well, you've also represented, was it England yeah. in the l triple, triple jump? Yeah. Triple jump. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it was last season. I started, uh, there was a triple jump coach and he was watching me do long jump. And he was, uh, he just wanted me to try out to do triple jump and uh, within a month I went to nationals. I came second, uh, so then that automatically gives you a, sp a spot in the England team, under 18s. What made you want to apply for Hashtag Academy second chance? Second chance. Uh, hashtag United, I see it as a family. I can see the, the banter, seriousness within the, the, within the family and the football club. Because I think that's really important for me. I would want to go to a football team and go to training matches for example and be with my boys for example, good players around me. So yeah, I said why not take a shot? 
Right, I'm here with Luke from Football Manager. Talk to me, how do you think the trial's going so far? It's been a really good day so far. Like the, um, the level of quality has been um, higher than I expected. And how different is it from how you would normally scout players to actually go in your game? Um, well, here we're looking at trials. We have to look at, you have to consider the conditions. You have to consider that these aren't players that they've ever played with before. Some are of different ages. You've got to consider the standard. Um, but in many ways, it is, it is very similar. Like you go out and you look for particular things in a player. You look to um, their specific attributes. You look at their traits. You look at what they can do on the pitch, um, what they're thinking um, while they're on the pitch. Um, so yeah, in many ways, it, it crosses over quite nicely with what we do on Football Manager. I've got like asterisks next to maybe four or five, but there's one guy who I'm going to say it now. Remember the name, Scott Pollock. This time, a couple of years ago, Seb famously said, remember the name, Scott Perkins, and then he corrected it and said, remember the name, Scott Pollock. That was a big moment because Seb, after only seeing a few bits of football of Scott, picked out him as a potential winner, and obviously we know that Scott went on to win it. Seb's not here this weekend, Scott is. So it's your turn to pick someone to remember the name of. I need a name from you, someone that's impressed you that you think could go the distance. Who are we officially saying we have to remember the name of? I'm going to go with number 84, Joshua Asude. You heard it from Scott as the final whistle blows. Remember the name, Joshua Asude. Right guys, thank you very much for today. Fantastic effort, uh, lots of football to watch. We're going to have a little chat now and eventually come up with 15 names, roughly 15 that we're going to put through and we're going to do the same thing tomorrow. So who do we think needs to go through, boys? 8-9, the strike up top. He's a good target man. I think he'll give good options up top. For me, he's got to be 62. He looks solid all day. Uh, I'm still going to go with number 50. I think his name's Isaac. I think it was the best passer here today. As a midfielder, I think he was very strong, so I think he's got to go through. 59. Yeah, tidy player, didn't seem to put a foot wrong, um, yeah, centre mid, um, did the simple stuff well, so yeah, I'm impressed by him. 63, 63 Jake, Jake Lindsay, good finisher. I would take 57. <laughs> um, he protected the back four quite well and his distribution was good. I'd go for 1-3-5, um, <laughs> likes to be known as Izu, he, I think he was a standout player today, centre half, big, strong, commanding. 1-6-6, six, six, yeah. yeah, Carlos Espino, decent big player. Uh, Quite quick, good on his feet, waits to track back as well. Okay lads, thank you for your input, I appreciate it and I think I think we've got our boys, so we're gonna go and let them know who's gone through. And he's not, let's do it. My big worry when, when I'm faced with days like today is not necessarily the people that we've put through. I, I don't come away from today thinking, have we put the right people through? My thoughts are more about 
is there anybody that we've missed? Is there anybody that should have gone through that we haven't taken through? It's not easy to take in everything you'd want to take in when, as you say, you've got about 90 players that you've got to see over the course of the day. OK, lads, thank you very much for waiting. I know it's been a fairly long day and a tiring day, so I appreciate your efforts and you've all done really well. Uh, well done again for getting this far. There's lots of thousands of people, in fact, that applied and didn't get invited, so hopefully you've enjoyed the day and had a good time. Uh, this is obviously the hardest bit where we have to let some of you go. Hopefully you don't take it too, too bad and you can come back and hopefully if we do a series like this again in the future, we might see you again, or if not, you crack on with your football career and I'm sure you go and do all the things you want to do. I'm going to read out 15 numbers that are going to step forward when I say the numbers and you're going to, you're going to be going through to the next episode. So starting off with a couple of goalkeepers. Can number two step forward? Well done. And number 12, step forward please. Well done boys. Feel free to clap. You can clap if you want. It's fair. It's a great feeling. Uh, come over on a Saturday morning uh, with about a lot of people coming and getting involved. It's Good. It's a nice, nice feeling to get through to the next round. Number 38. I feel good. It was a good opportunity, and uh, it's a good chance to better my career and show what I can do in the next round. Confident. Yeah, I feel confident. 59. I'm feeling pretty confident. I feel like I have more to offer, so um, so hopefully I can show it in the next round. You say you've got a lot to offer. What exactly have you got to offer? Just give the give the people a little teaser. I think like, hopefully my my quick feet, my skill more. Um, that wow factor, so hopefully just provide more excitement. 63, 135, 122, 84. I feel relieved, because when I first came I was stressed, I was shaking, nervous, but towards the end I felt confident and the coaches picked me to go through, so I'm happy. 86. I didn't think I was going to make it. I uh, had a bit of a shaky 11 aside game, but the five aside and the eight aside dragged me through it in the end. So, yeah, I'm buzzing. So, well done. We'll see you next Sunday for episode two. Commiserations for those of you that didn't make it. Thank you very much for being part of it. And obviously, look forward to uh, watching the episode when it goes on YouTube. So, well done, boys. It is tough saying goodbye to players. Obviously, everyone's come in and put a ridiculous uh, work rate in today, and I really appreciate it. Um, and even in one day you get to know a few lads and you know, a friendly bunch. It's harder later in the, in the series for sure when you've really developed a relationship with the players and you know who you like personality wise and you think oh, I'd, love to, I'd love to play football with them but maybe not quite up to scratch. The good thing is we've got our Sunday team so if any boys really want to be part of Hashtag and um, maybe just not quite ready for the first team they can come and play with me with the other rubbish players. <laughs> Okay, so that concludes our trial period of Hashtag Academy Season 2. It's over, we've had two really good days, really happy with the players we've found. I think we've got a good balance of positions, of ability, kind of technically mixed with physicality. There's a lot of potential in the boys that we've put through. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they, they do in the future episodes. Next episode, of course, will be where we make two teams out of our successful trialists and they play each other. And they're going to be playing for their place and from that we'll take one team through to actually play against Hashtag United. So it's going to be very fun, all kicking off. And of course, let's remember what they're playing for. A, a contract worth up to £5,000 and that massive glitch partnership, getting all kinds of gear provided to them and basically get to feel like a professional footballer. It's going to be amazing. So one of the people you've seen in this episode will be the winner. I want to hear who you guys think is going to win. Leave a comment below whose name should we remember. I want to hear those predictions. And of course, if you want extra content not seen before you can go to the glitch app there's a link in the description check it out you need to get that app because you're going to use it later in the series to vote for who makes it through this series is very much in your control drop a like on the video if you're happy to see the hashtag academy series back subscribe to the hashtag united channel for more until next time don't forget to hashtag it